Here again is my promise. You'll be able to manage your stress, be confident and calm in the moment, in the moment, in high pressure leadership situations, but it's deceptively simple. I just keep saying that and I keep reiterating my promise because I'm true to my word. I'm telling you what we're going to be talking about will work and it does work, but it just seems so, so simple. So here are the big three secrets or three big secrets. But I think before we get there, it's important for us to talk about some mistakes that, that are made. And, and these are mistakes that I've observed. You, there's probably, well, there are quite a few of them, but I'm just going to highlight a few of them. Thinking that we don't have control over our stress. That is such a, 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 a wrong belief. It's a false belief, folks. You do have control over your stress. And more specifically, I guess, maybe to, to put a fine point on it, maybe it's not the stress itself that you have control over, but it's your reaction to it. Because stress, as we'll talk about, is biological. It's, it's, it's our default setting, and it's actually a good thing. I'm glad we have stress. Fortunately, we've lost the ability to manage it. A lot of us try to avoid stress altogether, but that's just not the world we live in. And if you try to avoid stress altogether, it's actually going to be causing more stress. Stress. That's the irony, right? Chicken or egg. Well, you avoid things, so you procrastinate, right? Well, then what does that do, ladies and gentlemen? Folks, it doesn't help. It makes things worse. So we try to avoid it, but that's a big, big mistake. And we often confuse the word pressure and excitement with stress. So when I'm going to talk onto a stage, for example, there's 1500 people there. My heart rate is up, my breathing's elevated, I'm uh, anxious, so I have a lot of energy going on, but I can promise you it's not stress, it's actually excitement. The problem is they manifest or they show themselves very, very similarly physically. So we think of stress as this all-encompassing thing that if I feel any of these these feelings, my heart rate's up or, or you know, I feel and I've got excess energy, we automatically label as stress, but it's just not true. Not everything is stressful and we need to learn that excitement's okay. Pressure, sure, but stress, man, you know, our, our, I look at our young folks and if you have, have young people going through school, the word stress is like a middle, it's not even a middle name. It's a first name of individuals. So these are some common mistakes that I've seen for sure. And it's important that we, we talk about that because these are painful. These, these, and, and, and they're common, they're common, but they don't have to be. There is a solution and, and, and we're going to get to that. Now, what is stress? This is a saber toothed tiger. And so simply put, stress is a reaction to a threat. Now, when we think about back in the day, the cave person days, cave men, cave women, cave person days, I didn't have a lot of physical advantages with regard to how I handled a physical confrontation with a saber toothed tiger. So I've got the saber toothed tiger there. I've got me. Well, obviously, there's a bunch of things that he has over me physically, as I said. So what happened is we have this stress response, this fight, flight, or freeze response. And what it does is it actually gives me focus. So it gives me tunnel vision, it auditory exclusion. So it blocks out a bunch of hearing and listening stuff. It elevates my, my uh, pulse because my blood has to pump faster. By association, my breath goes up. And here's the insidious thing to leaders in particular, because remember, we make decisions. The prefrontal cortex, the kind of CEO part of our brain, it shuts down essentially because it's not a square root of 64 problem. It's not a higher brain function problem that if this happens, I do that or anything like that. This is survival now. We are talking about invoking the survival mechanism in our body. And it's done by just a dump of adrenaline and a whole bunch of other chemicals into our system. That's what stress is. And so it's, it gives us, it's designed to give us a short burst of energy so we can fight flight or freeze, unfortunately. And that's what it's designed to do. And it also shuts down non-vital body systems, things like our immune system or digestive system, because in the context of the saber tooth tiger thing, it doesn't matter if I can fend off the cold. It doesn't matter if I can finish digesting my food. I'm going to get eaten. So all hands on deck. So then you ask yourself, well, Daryl, what about like, how does it work in terms of like, having stress now because there's no longer a 
saber-toothed tiger. I went to the zoo. I've been to the zoo a bunch of times. I've not seen a saber-toothed tiger. I watch the news. I don't. I suppose I could YouTube, see if there's one on YouTube, but I think I'm going to come up empty. So what's the difference there? The difference is that while the threat has changed, so things like not paying our bills or financial trouble or relationship problems or something happening at work, like worrying about the promotion, that is still perceived as a threat to us. And so while the threat has changed, our reaction to it has not. And that is a very important point. But how we handle our stress response hasn't changed since the beginning of, of mankind. But what needs to happen is we need to recognize that, but then be able to change it. But here's the interesting thing. Is stress always a bad thing? And I'm here to argue and submit to you that it is not. We actually need stress. On the left, you see performance. On the bottom, you see stress. And we, this is called the yerkes dots and human performance curve. You see boredom and complacency. When we don't have high levels of stress, you don't see high performance, folks. You see boredom and you see complacency. But then as we turn that stress dial up a little bit, you see what happens to the curve. We actually reach our peak performance and we get in the zone. We get into an optimal level of performance under the right amount of stress. But herein lies the problem. If we continue to turn that stress dial up, we get into what I call the cognitive and emotional danger zone, where I no longer can make good decisions. Because remember, the CEO, he has essentially, in this case, for me, it's, it's a he, the CEO packs up the briefcase, leaves the brain office and says to the primitive part of the brain, hey, you're in charge, you're in charge. We don't need to worry about all this other stuff right now. And hey, just keep us alive, will you? And leaves the office. Well, what that does is now that really essentially degrades our, our higher brain function, if not eliminates them entirely. Now, emotionally, this is when we're very prone to making bad decisions. This is when we are, will fly off the handle and it happens really, really quickly. So this, this is where we get into a lot of trouble. But before we get there, we have reached some point of peak performance. And that's important to recognize. Now, this is, I love this picture. This is my son, Disney World. He knows I'm showing it. He laughs. And uh, this, is this is Splash Mountain. And uh, he, he survived. He's still alive, uh, despite the look on his face. So here's a question for you. What are your most common stress reactions? And I know for me, irritability is one for sure. And I start to get really short in terms of my sentences and things like that. But think to yourself, what are your most common stress reactions? A lot of them will revolve around frustration or anger or uh, irritability, I'm sure. But there are, oh man, oh man, we can go on and on with that. But just give yourself a little bit of a check there.